Welcome back. The Aspen Ideas Festival has been underway in Colorado all week. It's brought together experts and specialists from all walks of life. Talk about everything from spirituality to mental health and the future of modern day technology. You've probably noticed I've been anchoring solo this week. That's because our very own Savannah Sellers has been out in Colorado at the festival. She joins us now. Savannah, so good to hear. We want to hear what you've been doing there. But first, Love the shot behind you. I think it's impossible to have a bad live shot in Aspen. T tell us how you've been spending your time. Right and also, I know Aspen's, what, about 8,000 feet above sea level. Hard to adjust, or do your boulder days <laughs> prepare you for that? <laughs> I think you're asking, Joe, am I still gasping with each step? Which the answer is pretty much yes. But at the hotel, they give us this chlorophyll water. That's some science I don't really understand, but it's making me feel a lot better and helping with the altitude adjustment. But yes, since I went to school here, it's so much fun to be back. Been up to Aspen quite a few times back when I was in college, so it's so much fun to just walk around the town and have all those memories. But I feel like you'd be pretty surprised and you'd be pretty proud of me, Joe, knowing that um, I'm not exactly what you would call athletic, but I did partake in about a 15-mile bike ride. Ooh. I went on like a three-mile hike one day. It's just been so much fun. It's just so absolutely beautiful here, and it's fun to get that time, you know, out and about in nature with our colleagues. So it's been so great. Thank you for asking me what I've been up to. Just breathing in Aspen is physical activity. So, all right, Savannah, let's talk yes. a little bit more about yes. some of the great conversations you had this week, including with Uber CEO yesterday. What did you discuss? What's next in the cards for Uber? Absolutely. So Uber has made this incredible announcement in the U.S., Canada and Europe. They want to go zero emissions by 2030 and the rest of the world by 2040. Here's the thing, though. Uber doesn't actually own any of the cars that their drivers are driving. Those are independent contractors. And we all know that electric vehicles are quite expensive. So the question is, how are they going to get there? What type of parameters are going to be in place? What type of help are drivers going to get to actually buy those cars? I mean, think about it. We know a lot of people in our lives who maybe would really want an electric vehicle, but they've paid off off their car. It's still running fine. And those other cars are still very expensive. So here's a little bit of what he told me about this process. What will happen in 2030 if a driver does not have an electric vehicle? Well, hopefully if we do our job uh, and again, I would say that we need governments to pitch in, et cetera. By 2030, every single driver on the platform will have an electric vehicle because it would be crazy for them not to. OK. Um, and our job is to get to that spot. But, you know, in 2030, if a driver isn't driving an EV, then they're not going to be able to be on our platform. That's essentially what our goal is. So obviously, Joe, that relies on a lot of other partners to make it so that it would be crazy not to have one. He's essentially talking about that's how we should all feel, that we will all be able to buy them because they will have come down in price. And also, there will be things like charging infrastructure having had major improvements. So that will all remain to be seen, of course. Yeah, that's definitely going to have to happen if you have a fleet of Ubers out there. All right. You also sat down with former 2020 presidential candidate Andrew Yang. I know you talked about the future of politics in the two-party system. What can you tell us? Yeah, so Andrew Yang is, at this point anyway, uh, not running for the White House or anything like that. He was a little cagey on that topic. He didn't say, no, I absolutely am not. But he also said, at this point, no, I am not running. What he is doing is he has started a third political party. And the way that he describes that is it's essentially 51 organizations across the country because he started this in each state and then one at the federal level. What he's really going for is to try to flip seats within state down ballot offices. So he's trying to essentially get people that he says are moderate on both sides of the aisle who want to see this third party, people who feel politically homeless, as he said. But, of course, we also had a whole conversation about what is going on in terms of the race for the White House right now, which, as we all know, uh, at this point, we have the front runner in the former President Donald Trump on the Republican side and then as well as President Biden running. Uh, he was quite strong on what he thinks the current President Biden should be doing in this race. Take a listen. So I had planned to ask several questions about the president's mental competency, his age, your concerns with that. But it sounds like you're telling me just that you would like to see him step out of this. Just let me put a fine point on that. Yeah, I think it's the right thing for the country. I do. In the wake of that, anyone that you would support specifically? Well, I, I listed five governors, uh, all of whom I think uh, are well positioned to be the next nominee of the Democratic Party. Uh, and I think there should be a robust process and let, let the party decide. 
So again, Joe, he did pretty forcefully say that he thinks that President Biden should be stepping out of this race and allowing for there to be this real primary process within the Democratic side, of course, as we're seeing on the Republican side. And Savannah, <laughs> we have just listened a minute here, but I understand you also did a panel with an author who you are quite fond of. Oh my goodness, Joe. Her name is Curtis Sittenfeld. She is so fantastic. She wrote a book that a lot of us read back when we were in elementary school called Prep. You probably remember it. Um, yes, she wrote this book. It's called Romantic Comedy. There's me and my new best friend, as I'd like to think. Um, it's called Romantic Comedy. And what's really fun about it is it's essentially loosely based on SNL. Of course, we're lucky enough to have that in 30 Rock and having been a page a decade or so ago, having worked around SNL and been in that studio, given tours of it. It was so much fun to connect with her on it. And what's so impressive about her is that she actually had no access to SNL. She didn't know anybody there. She didn't get any special tours. She didn't get any special interviews. She just essentially read every single book, every single biography, any type of memoir that any cast member has ever written and did such fantastic research. I mean, she has it down to the floors that the offices are on in 30 Rock. It's just a really cute book. And it was a nice light little moment. They've been doing these book clubs here this week. So nice. it's a lot of fun. Nice to have a little levity. All right. Savannah Sellers, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.